Right, as you can see, the good old Posty has brought me a copy of Rescue on Fractalus on the Commodore 64. Now, I originally had this on the Atari 800 XL back in the day, and you are talking over 30 years ago, possibly 35 years ago, but I used to really enjoy this game, made by Mastertronic. Obviously, you made some really, really good budget games. But this one arrived. Unfortunately, the cassette box was damaged, but I um, managed to dig one out in my garage somewhere, swap that over, so that's uh, the cassette box looking a lot better. And uh, But the actual paperwork and pamphlet itself actually looks in pretty good condition. I know you can get copies of these sometimes people make new reprints of these uh, game paperwork but i think this is possibly the original one just in quite good condition tape itself is in good condition and i managed to load it first thing this morning i had to to and fro a little bit i had to mess about with the volume on the commodore 64 data recorder which some of you know you can do with a screwdriver you have to pop it down a little hole and twist it left and right get the volume right but i eventually got there and got it loaded we will load it up again now and we'll have a whirl and have a bit of a nostalgic trip Right, as you can see, I've already played it a little bit. We've gone up a level or two because I might to sort of get myself used to the controls again. Now, basically, I'm using my QuickShot 2 joystick. I love my QuickShot 2 joystick. I use it on the Commodore 64 when I play my ZX Spectrum. There's a few other controls you've got to use on a Commodore 64 keyboard, like um, when you want to turn off your engines and turn them on again, or if you want to go to the mothership increase and decrease speed you sort of do this via the keyboard itself but as you can see we've come out the mothership and we're going onto the planet surface now as soon as you break through you actually start to see the mountain terrain and uh, it really is rocky and fractious it's almost like it sounds like fractious but maybe they meant that but as you can see i've got my little sort of reader on the right there and i'm scanning and you see the little white dot flashing on the scanner it's got lr underneath it that's where the pilot is and when you get that white flashing dot you're in range of a pilot now you have to get within a certain range once you hear that beeping and flashing you are close enough to pick him up so um what i'm going to try and do here is um i'm going to try and sort of uh, see if i can see him really because you can see the pilots if you land correctly but i'm not having too much luck here but um we'll keep on looking a little bit and see if we can see his sort of ship but if we have no luck we'll turn the engines off anyway you have to turn off your engines to pick him up well, i'm under a bit of fire here yeah. when you turn your engines off thankfully they stop shooting at you the enemy defenses but I've not seen him or his ship yet, but um, I think we're going to have to turn off the engines. You have to turn off your engines. Uh, let's listen out for him. He's coming up. We might see him if we're lucky. Well, oh, there we go. He's uh, he's come wandering up to the ship. And he tries to get on. He's going to bang on the door. And um, if you so wish, you let him in. Now, he's not going to live too long out there uh, without oxygen. So uh, we've got to let him in quite quickly. But as you saw, he had a sort of um, white or yellow coloured helmet on. Now, if he's got a green helmet then that is trouble. It's going to be an alien and you don't want to let him on board. But anyway, we're off again, up into the mountains. We're going to sort of fly around. The target system wasn't too bad. I mean, the way the sort of graphics worked out, the sort of 3D style graphics for the time was pretty good. So you've got to try and take care of these defences if you can. Keep them at a distance. So those flying saucers are a kamikaze. They will fly straight into you and sort of try and smash up your ship or try and kill you if you like. But yeah, we'll sort of keep hunting around and there we go. There's another sort of dot coming up on the scanner. So we'll head over there and see if we can pick this pilot up. Again, you've got to get within range. And uh, oh, there's two pilots actually. I think there's one to our right and one to our left. But um, we'll try and get down close to this one if we can. Hang on, we'll take care of this. Um, try and take care of these laser defences, I think, first. But Oh no, hang on a minute. We'll fly down there. Well, there we go. We're, we're actually there already. So we'll drop down again. Um, if you're too high up, it won't let you land. You have to get a bit lower. But um, let's turn the engines off and let's have a look to see if we can see this one. But here we go. Right, it doesn't look like I'm going to see this one. There you are, he's banging on the door. Now, if you haven't seen him, so you don't know the colour of his helmet, so sometimes let him knock a few times. An alien, I don't think, knocks that much. So let him knock a couple of times and then if you think he's probably human, you let him in. Don't let him stay out there too long because he's going to die. And don't turn your engines on because you'll fry the poor pilot to death instantly when you turn them on. So you don't want to be doing that either. So anyway, head off again up into the mountain ranges and uh, let's get looking for some more pilots. But yeah, this was a good game by Mastertronic. You know, another sort of low budget game. But it's the sort of game I used to play for sort of half an hour, 45 minutes. And, uh, and it'd be a good little buzz, you know, sort of uh, trying to go around rescuing these pilots. The other thing is apparently, well, I never found one, because especially this time, I've only played it today. But some of the pilots uh, had a purple helmet on. Now, apparently, they're ace pilots. And uh, they are rare, apparently. And they're meant to be so good that they hardly ever get shot down, sort of thing. But apparently, it's quite good to find one of them. I might have a bit of a play of this later again today and see if I can get one of those. But as you can see, we're coming into another pilot now. And going to get ourselves down there. 
let's have a look. Oh, we can see that one. Was that the one we're at? Oh, but anyway, we're um, we're down there. We'll see if we can get this pilot. Off he comes again. And we'll, uh, we haven't seen him, so I have to wait for him to knock. Um, well, he's going to have to wait a bit longer than that, just in case. But um, oh, uh, he's knocked a bit quicker. That seems a bit of a quicker knock this time, but we'll wait a second. Right, he slowed down. I think that's a human. We'll open the doors, let him in, and uh, we'll get those systems up and running again. We'll get up into the mountains again. But yeah, I really like the look of this uh, game back in the day. I'm actually really enjoying playing this now. Um, uh, to me, you know, sometimes it's just as enjoyable, not just a nostalgic trip. If a game's good, it's good in my mind, uh, whether it's made 25, 30 years ago or made yesterday. But we're coming in on another one. Actually, I think we've got a good view through our camera here. I'll turn off the systems. Yeah, we're going to get a good view of this one. Uh, hang on a minute. Now you can see there was definitely a shade of green on his head, so we're not letting this guy in. And there we go. Now you turn your systems on and you fry him. He's instantly fried. Apparently, though, if you do let him on your ship, if you uh, head back to the mothership, I think they uh, they take care of him for you. But um, he kicks up a bit of a fuss if he gets on your ship, and he'll bust things up. But anyway, this is a Rescue on Fractalus uh, on the Commodore 64. I hope you enjoyed the little journey as I have, and I've really enjoyed playing it. Anyway, you take care.